McClintock, gentleman from California is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Hur. I first want to get this straight. Is it now okay if I uh, take home top secret documents, store them in my garage, and read portions of them to, to friends or associates? Congressman, I, I wouldn't recommend it, but I don't want to entertain any hypotheticals at this well, point. Was it okay? I mean, I, I can do that now under this new doctrine? Again, Congressman, I, I wouldn't recommend that you do that, but um, well, I don't you, want you've, to... Well, you, you've essentially said so in your report, uh, and, and certainly it would be exculpatory if I, if I simply told you, hey, I'm, I'm getting old, I don't remember stuff the way I used to. Congressman, I'm not here to get into hypotheticals. I'm here to talk about the facts and the work that I did. In it was the not a hypothetical. This is the issue at hand. Uh, you, you, you correctly noted in your report that uh, former presidents and other senior officials have been given wide latitude in their possession of classified information. And I believe your decision to, to pro uh, not to prosecute Biden uh, for the same offense is, is consistent with that precedent. But the, the problem is that precedent changed with the administration's decision to prosecute Donald Trump. And the irony is that as president, Trump had full discretion over handling uh, classified material and, and full discretion in deciding which records to retain. As a senator or vice president, Joe Biden didn't have that. So now we get to this glaring double standard. I think it would be toxic to the rule of law on its face if it was just two ordinary citizens. But the fact that the only person being prosecuted for this offense happens to be the president's political opponent makes this an unprecedented assault on our democracy. This is the worst we could expect from a banana republic. And I wonder how you square this. Congressman, I do address, as I was required to as a prosecutor, uh, a relevant precedent in the form of the alleged, the allegations and the indictment against former President Trump. I set forth my explanation and my assessment and comparison of those precedents in my report, and I am not here to comment any further be, uh, well, beyond well, what's in my you, report. You said, for example, that, that um, uh, uh, there, there was no evidence beyond reasonable doubt. Well, you got the fact that he had classified material in his possession and control in multiple settings for multiple years, that he told others he was aware of this, and that he shared that material with others. The mind boggles at what beyond reasonable doubt would actually mean? Well, as I set forth in, at length in my uh, explanations in chapters 11 and 12 of the report, my assessment is that the evidence, if presented at trial, alongside potential defense arguments, would not probably result in a conviction at well, trial. Well, that's one of the points you make, is that President Biden's likely to be an elderly, sympathetic uh, a figure with a poor memory. But how does that bear on any individual's guilt or innocence? Isn't that, again, a question for a judge or jury to decide after guilt or innocence is, is, is determined? It is. Uh, and, and again, here's the problem. Donald Trump's being prosecuted for exactly the same act that you've documented that Joe Biden committed. Congressman, uh, if I understood your question correctly, you said, isn't that a question for a jury? And it most certainly, in the through the lens well, of my, my question is, does that bear on the guilt or innocence of an individual? It certainly bears on how a jury is going to receive and perceive and make decisions. So the answer to my evidence. earlier question is correct. All I have to do when I'm caught taking home uh, classified materials is to say, I I'm sorry, Mr. Herbert, but I'm getting old. My memory's not so great. Yeah, Congressman, I, Th this I is the doctrine that you've established in our laws now, and it's frightening. Congressman, my intent is certainly not to establish any sort of doctrine. I had a particular task. I have a particular set of evidence to consider and make a judgment with respect to one particular set of evidence, and that is what I did. Well, Mr. Herr, here's, here's the fine point of the matter. The, the foundation of our justice system is equal justice under law. That's what give the law uh, its, its respect and its legitimacy. And, and without it, the law is simply force devoid of any moral authority. Justice is depicted as blindfolded for, for this very reason. It doesn't matter who comes before her. All are treated equally. You destroy this foundation, and, and the rule of law becomes a sick mockery. It becomes a weapon to wield against political rivals and, and a tool of despotism. And I am desperately afraid that uh, this decision of the Department of Justice this is now crossed a, a very bright line, and I yield back. Chairman yields back. Chairman, 